I love the oscilloscope. You can plug any signal in there and it shows up on the screen. Sound waves, video signals, even just a weak electrical signal with no other purchase on the senses. You can inspect electronic sounds that are usually too low frequency to detect. Sometimes it takes a little tuning. James used this to show me the guest in our wiring here in town. There's a low hum. Barely even a hum because it's too slow to be audible. A slow, gentle oscillation that offsets every other electrical signal in town. James hasn't been able to figure out what causes the hum, but it's okay. It's too subtle to cause any real problems for us. It's just there. Ugh, more leaks. This is not sustainable. James has been working on this circuit diagram for a while now. The diagram's been up on the chalkboard for at least a couple of months. It's a schematic for some essential component in the image processor. Nobody understands it but James. That's the point. He's trying to clean it up and simplify it a bit. He'll publish the simplified diagram, and everyone can build an image processor. Meanwhile, it's like hieroglyphics in here. The schematic seems to get more eerie the longer James is away. He understands it, which keeps it tethered in the realm of the human. Otherwise, it might as well be lichen. The bowls on the floor are getting full pretty quickly. Hope somebody's planning to empty these. Somebody else. town looks really empty in the rain. I wonder if that's true in cities, too. If rain makes it all look empty. I'm trying to remember. What's a big city I've been in when it rained? Oh, Chicago. Downpour in Western Avenue. We took shelter in a gas station. Does it just look empty because everyone stays inside? No. There's something uncanny about a town in a thunderstorm. It's like a reanimated corpse. It's Ron's big moment. So, okay, Ron. Anything that you want to tell us about that tape? Everything on that tape was wild. Really? Everything? Wild stuff indeed. Even the horses. Everything on that tape was wild. I bought some forged folk tapes at a yard sale once. The lady said there were live tapes of John Ritchie playing dulcimer at some local bar. They were pretty good, too. A little noisy, with the rattling bottles and chatty drunks. But it gave the recordings a certain aura of authenticity. Were the horses wild? I thought those were the horses here. Oh, the neighbors? We call the horses here the neighbors. No, I didn't recognize that one. Then I noticed some of the background sounds repeating. Someone telling the same hushed story at the bar during every song. A door opening and closing in exactly the same way. The lady who sold me the tapes, she'd added the bar sounds artificially. I think she recorded the music herself, in her bedroom, and put Richie's name on it. I don't think there are any wild horses anymore. Really? How could that be? Oh, well, they've all been domesticated. Are the neighbors domesticated? We don't own them, no. They're, uh, feral? The tapes live permanently in my truck. Over the years, they've become my favorite Ritchie recordings. Oh, right. In your documentary, you'd said that people who used to live here had freed their horses. Exactly. But you can free your pet cat, but it won't turn back into a panther? 
great. That's a kind of haunting, a kind of ghost, like Ben was saying. But everything is a ghost around here these days. It's a ghost town, with people still living in it, against all reason. Most of the houses are empty. There's always been people here. After the Pueblo de Nada, the community airstrip, then the company town, then WEVP. What about the dogs? Uh, yeah, Ron, was the dog wild? Everything on that tape was wild. Somehow, just as the last group dies out, some new utopian project always finds a way to take hold. What is it about this place? It must be the well. It didn't look wild to me. I guess it's a matter of perspective. Uh, I'm not sure I agree, but now it's time for the weather. Thanks again, Ron. We're hanging on long past our expiration date. Well, the weather should be pretty wild. I can hear it for myself right now. Yeah, getting pretty intense out there. Do you get storms like this a lot? More and more. Right, of course. And then, of course, there's the actual ghost. Alright, here's Elmo with the weather report. And, lucky us, we also have Serrano Cole, who stopped by to add some drama. Musically. I hear he's going to be at the rum colony later tonight if you need a cocktail after the show. So, let's go live to Elmo for the weather report. Oh, is Elmo ready? I should make sure the camera's pointed in the right direction. Oh, good. Standing water on the floor and a hole in my boot. Cool. My socks are getting wet. I love to have wet socks. Looks like the ceiling panels are swelling a little. Is that really happening? Are we about to get drenched? Alamo and Serrano are killing this weather report. Emily, whispering. Hey. Hey. This is so trippy. How did he work out these ratios of oil, water, and dyes? It seems so precise the way he drips them in one little half drop at a time. It must have been a lot of trial and error. Just staring at a circle of light on the wall. Drip, drip, drip. Where do you get your supplies, Elmo? Uh, ben has a guy in... Oh, wait, you mean the projection stuff. I mail order these candle dyes. This other stuff is just mineral oil. Like you can get at the drugstore. The projector? Somebody just left it here, man. Incredible. Uh, actually, it was that girl who does the pirate video stuff. You know, jamming our signal. Right. Um, going off script here. The pirate video stuff jamming signal, wasn't that done by, was it Weaver Marquez or... Or Shannon? No, I don't think it was Shannon. I think it was Weaver Marquez who did that stuff. Weaver. Yeah. Yeah. Our resident ghost. <laughs> ghost, huh? You really think she's dead? Does it matter? Of course it matters. You can't leave a ghost behind until you die, right? Well, that's one way to do it. But have you ever missed someone so bad you felt like they were haunting you? Or been in a relationship with someone where it feels like their ex-lover is always in the room? I see what you mean. Hey, you think she'll get us tonight? It's about time, right? He's right. We're about due. Plus, Saturn's in retrograde. So I hear. Not that she keeps a strict schedule, but it's never longer than a month or two between... What does Mimi call them? 
I know they're bad for the general vibe around here, but can I be honest? Emily nods in mock gravity. I kind of like it when she busts in and takes over our signal. It's like a log falling on the road. Reminds you that this all used to be trees. Interventions. That's what Mimi calls it. It's been going on for a couple of years now. Her performances were cool, though. I never saw her uh, perform, but I heard about it. Oh, yeah. I saw her do it a few times. I was into it. That first time she jammed our signal and showed up in our broadcast, I didn't know who she was. She'd already disappeared when I came in and took over her old job. She did lectures, right? Yeah, you could say that. I thought of them as storytelling sessions. She talked for hours and shuffled through slide after slide of shapes, numbers, weird constellations. Who knows what any of it meant? Everyone was so excited and confused and scared a little on the defensive. They still are. And this was her projector. Right. I don't know where she got it, though. It still works really well. I got a spare bulb at a resale shop, but I haven't had to use it yet. It's strange. I never think of what she's doing as hostile, really. Sounds like Elmo has the same impression. What happened to the rest of her stuff? I bet her slides are still here in the studio. Maybe with the posters? Sherry has all Weaver's old notebooks. I know that. Uh, she keep them, keeps them in her archive. You know, the big blue filing cabinet. With the daisies painted on. Yeah. Anyway, the really hard part to find is these two pieces of glass. They have to be paired very precisely. I had to get these from the clock store over in Glasgow. That's where they come from. Clock faces. Thanks for the tips, dude. Anytime, dude. Thanks, Elmo and Serrano. Next, we have a selection from the Video Data Bank. You're gonna like this one, Maya. This one's about caves. Ooh. Yeah, local caves. We play this one a lot. It's pretty cool. Oh, but we have a phone call. Should we get it now, or should we wait? Uh, we'll get it now. Okay. Rita presses a button on the telephone next to her. Hello, WEVP. Hope you all packed a lunch. Sounds like this is going to be a long one. They should be okay if I wander around a bit. Hey, babe. <laughs> a snap and then a chitter. Did you know Weaver? A few caws and a caw. Oh, really? Did you ever see her lectures? Sounds amazing. Would have liked to see that. You make her sound so normal. Talk to anyone else and it's like she had a second head. One of our little mysteries, like the out-of-towner. 
really? Did you know him well? Wow. I had no idea. It was terrible what happened to him. Right. Justice. Someday. What a waste. Sad. Well, have fun. I'm going to see if Jeff is done. Someone, uh, I accidentally skipped over the first bit of dialogue. Um, she jot down time and date whenever there was an intervention. Mimi hasn't been by in a few weeks, though. When was the last one? Let's see what the notes say. Oh, wait. She just wrote times, not dates. Well, it's not very helpful. They're all at night. I guess that's a pattern. Oh, and here's Ron's recipe for mac and cheese. <laughs> Six cups of milk? Decadent. No leaks back here just yet. The tapes are safe for the moment. I have a bad feeling the situation won't last. Soon I'll be scrounging for a tarp to protect the video data bank. The couch is getting a little damp, but Ben and Bob don't seem to mind. Probably too wrapped up in their project. Bob had some theories about Weaver's broadcasts. He was considering how she might be tapping into our wires here in town. He built a model, like a proof of concept. This big metal box you could wire up and use to take over our signal. It actually worked. But the thing needed too much power to run. Even a car battery could only keep it going for a few seconds. Weaver's broadcast just loops and loops, sometimes for hours. Consolidated power doesn't pay any attention to this town anymore. But they still have us on a strict energy budget. There's no way she's plugged into the grid. Oh my god, he's still going. Shit, the line's dead. The phone lines are such a mess up here. Uh, hello? Was that the storm? Or was it the damn phone lines? Man, they're really flaky. Ugh. Business as usual. He has a really soothing voice. That's Jeff. He's a regular caller. He's asleep. Hmm? My indicates Ron, who's fallen asleep in his chair. Oh. Well, let him sleep. Okay, well, let's play the tape. This is Cave Art. It's a classic around here. I'm excited. Looks like Moe's got this one all queued up. Way to go, Mo. I should let Maya enjoy the tape. So, if Weaver is a ghost, by some agreed-upon definition in mechanics, that means WEVP-TV is haunted. Should we be doing something about that? Aren't you just supposed to, like, have an exorcism or something? I mean, you can't just leave a place haunted. That would be negligence. I'd miss her, though. I guess there are good ghosts and bad ghosts. Like spiders. Good in the garden. Bad in the shower. A loud crashing noise from outside wakes Ron up. 
What the hell? What was that? I'll check it out. Yikes. Should we go help? Oh, no, he's... Oh, the tape is over. What did you think? That was great. Yeah, oh. That sounded pretty close. No, is the power out or just the lights? I don't know, it's... I'll take a look. Maybe a fuse blew on a relay or something. Some scared rat chewed a wire. Abandoned ship. Just kidding. Guess I'll take a look around and see if anything's smoking. Oh, look at the way the... Drawing matches up with the stars into, uh, like a constellation. Our little town must seem even more romantic now, huh? If it survives the night. Maybe we should call... Nah, the phones are definitely dead now. Guess it's up to me to figure out what's going on here. Is that a... No, of course not. Lightning flashes in the dark make it look like a slideshow out there. My summer vacation in the ghost town. They're still picking away at their project in the dark as the storm bears down on us. So, what else is new? That's this whole town, just whistling along on its way to the grave. Poor thing, she's soaked. Nikki, are you having trouble with... Oh, spoke too soon. Thought your power was out. Yeah, it just came back on. Weird. Good, though. You made it. In this storm. No, oh, I'd never miss the evening broadcast. To be honest, it's the only time I get to share my work. Nikki's still carrying a torch for the out-of-towner. Sure, of course. That's great. What happened with the power? That was weird, right? The power? Well, seems like a normal kind of thing to happen in a storm. Yeah, you're right. I just have an eerie feeling tonight. Well, you know, Saturn's in retrograde, right? It sure is. Well, ready to go? Ready. Some of the studio wiring is in puddles now. That's dangerous, right? Nobody else seems concerned about it. Okay, I'm just gonna pretend I didn't see that. Okay, this ceiling is falling apart. Doesn't bode well for the roof. Now we enter the cultural section of tonight's program. Did you fix it? Just came back on its own. It'll just take a second for the equipment to warm back up and we'll be on the air again. Spooky. It's a disaster out there. The neighbor's barn is basically underwater. Wow, so just completely... Yeah, just completely flooded. I passed Ron on the way in. He's gonna take a look and see if there's anything he can do. Will they be okay? Ron knows what he's doing. He used to be a firefighter. It's a little bit different though, right? I guess. Nikki hands some wet paper towels to Rita. Oh, thanks. Nikki pulls a journal out of her jacket pocket. I brought my work. Oh, good. To Maya, Nikki reads her poetry. It's a weekly feature of our broadcast. Oh, great. I look forward to hearing it. Yeah, I just hope that we can keep going. We lost power a little while before, right? Better get started, then. To the camera, reading. To the out-of-towner. 
What eagle flew you to your final bed? It was not men who brought you there to sleep. The men who left you bloodied then and fled had chosen mud and muddy watered creek. Did wild turkeys gobble, dote, and care, and wipe the moss beneath your eyelids clear? Did cardinals pull the twigs out from your hair and wash your hands and feet and trim your beard? When wood ducks dressed you in your resting gown and pigeons fashioned shoes from leaves and bark, who then sewed flowers onto a burial crown, the one who made your headdress was a hawk. The men who broke your body, where were they? The vultures stayed home on your funeral day. Ben yelling, Emily, look at the monitor. Dude, be quiet, we're live right now. No, we're not, look. That's not our broadcast. Damn, there she is. Elmo is right. What's wrong? It's her. Weaver. Oh, really? Tonight? Sorry about this, Maya. What's going on? Local prankster. She jams our signal every once in a while. Whenever the stars align. Prankster? Not the word I would use. Damn, so what do you do about it? Just wait until she's done. We've never been able to stop her from jamming us. We don't even know how she does it. We should be back on in a minute, though. Don't worry. Okay, well that makes me very uncomfortable for the next act. Pretty sure the outsider that they're talking about is Conway. And... They talked about... Like the poem talked about... People breaking the outsider's... The out-of-towner's body and... Said that like justice would come to them. Yeah... That sounds like stuff that's going to happen in the next and final act. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be a happy ending. Well, I think I'm going to end this episode here, so I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when we return, we're going to begin Act 5.